Hey everybody, welcome to my channel. We are on Joe Conyers' channel and today we are doing a Belted Out Basses video and we're gonna be talking about one of my favorite composers. If you haven't already, hit that subscribe button, hit that like button, hit that alert button. And now let's listen to Mendelssohn. Hello. <laughs> um, it's been a while, I know. I've been very busy with concerts, with the orchestra, nonprofit work, All City Orchestra, Boston University Tango Institute. It's been a lot. Juilliard. It's been a, a busy, a busy period, particularly after the holidays. Getting everything caught up, it's been nuts. But I'm back. I am doing a belted out basis today. It'll be my first post, playing post of 2021, and I'm doing it on one of my favorite composers. His name is Felix Mendelssohn. Um, this is from his third symphony, the Scottish. But something always bugged me about the Scottish symphony. Because, you know, there's like the first symphony, in the, which most people don't know offhand. I know a little bit of it. One of them has like, I think it's number two. It's got the choir and a big hymn. I can't, I think it's number two. But three, four, and five are by far Mendelssohn's most famous symphonies. And I even, when I was a student, I learned these, I was like, like four and five just seems so different uh, than three. And I'll tell you why. Because the fourth symphony was little, is light. To get really, really light and has this freshness to it. Reminds me of early Erb Mendelssohn. We, we all know Mendelssohn was another genius composer. He was writing really intense music at very, very young ages. So. Uh, at 15, he wrote the famous, the famous, well, what do they call it? Is it a viola quintet? Is it a viola quintet? Because it's pian, but it's a piano? I don't know what they call it. Because it's got <laughs> one violin, I'm seeing if I get this right, two violas, cello, bass, piano sextet, um, or viola sextet. <laughs> It's the sextet. That's right, the Mendelssohn sextet. I played it many times. I have a recording with uh, Chamber Music Society of Lincoln Center, which is actually available. You can get that. That's a, that was a really fun performance. Anyway, I digress. He wrote that piece when he was 15. And you can tell Mendelssohn was flexing the whole way. I know his name is Felix, but he changed his name to Flex Mendelssohn, like, like hardcore. Uh, flexing some serious compositional muscles. And for those of you who are not bass players, who might be listening, string players, and might know the very famous octet. Mendelssohn wrote that octet when he was 16 years old. 16. The piece is masterful. It is literally, it is masterful. If I did one piece, if I wrote one piece like that in life, I would, I would be a very happy person. And Mendelssohn did that at the age of 16. So Mendelssohn was a very accomplished, very um, a virtuosic and um, definitely genius composer. And it's so interesting because I think he, he's like Mozart, but different. It's just different. I, and I, that's the best way I can describe it. Um, uh, and I actually describe Felix Mendelssohn to be the Rachmaninoff <laughs> of his time because his melodies are so sweeping and lush and sweeping and lush. Really, really just gorgeous writing, particularly coming out of the classical era. And it, like the, the, he, um, he takes like the delicacies of the classical period and really goes nuts with kind of looking into the future of what romanticism might be and how that would affect his music. It's just, it's just genius in every way. So anyway, back to the symphonies. So the fourth, really great piece, um, very exciting, but for me kind of light, even with the last movement. And then the fifth symphony is also another great piece of music but it's also, to me, a little lighter. It's like, it's, when I say lighter, it reminds me more of classical. It's just a little classical in nature. Whereas the third is all of a sudden much darker and way more musically, to me, mature. Not to say that his music beforehand was not mature, but the music of the symphony, of the third symphony, there's a darkness and a richness to it that, to me, goes beyond the symphonies that came before. So that always bugged me. It's like, why is that number three? Until I was in history class one day, music history class, and learned that the symphonies of Mendelssohn were published out of order. 
and that the third symphony, while published third, is actually the last symphony he wrote. And then it was like, ah, oh, it all made sense. So yeah, the, the ordering of Mendelssohn's symphonies is, is out of order. So I think it's one, two, four, five, three. I think that's the order they were written. So for belted out basses, I was looking at this tune and after the opening, this is opening beautiful chorale. Da -di -da -di -da -di, whatever, I mean, yeah. And after the, the, uh, they, they um, create, they set the mood, the woodwinds, da -da -di -da -da -da, the violins come in with this very impassioned. This to me makes it very different from all the symphonies right away with this. And he writes this fourth sondo in his forte with the sustain. But I don't think it's like, it's not like a, I, I think that's not the, particularly when the, the character of the, the music that comes before it, to me it's more like a, like a, that's the fourth sondo that's weighted and like, this is an experienced sports sondo. This is a young Mendelssohn, 15 year old genius sports sondo. This is a lot more, he's lived some life at this point. <laughs> so, and then we have this piano. So even to me, that theme is so beautiful, so haunting. This because we have this piece in the A minor, like the third symphony. This and then we're definitely on a search. We reach to this third in the A minor. And then actually, it's not an A minor anymore. It's um. Uh, Yes, it's, that would be, yeah, F major and third and, and second, inver first inversion. Yes, I think it's right. Yeah, because it's A, of course, yes. Um, so it has F. So there's like, it's, 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 it's this immediate um, uh, uh, color change there. And to me, already, he's, he's got, there's something going on. He's got a lot to say. <laughs> on a forte, the piano, crescendo, back to forte, piano, crescendo, to forte, to piano, and that's the lick I'm going to play. That's basically it, but there's just so much drama even in that. So Mendelssohn-esque. And that's why, again, that's why I think of him literally as a Rachmaninoff of this era. Because it, it, there's so much um, stuff <laughs> in the writing. So much storytelling and imagination. Because I, I, and not to say that this doesn't exist in classical, because it definitely exists in the era. But if anything, it almost harkens back to even Baroque, to me, with this almost rhapsodic, it's not deep. I mean, I, I, it's not, it, but even though the, 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 that's the time, I think it's a little bit more, we don't know exactly where the, the ground is. So. Dynamics with this fourth sound, piano, 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 and that is the excerpt. So, as I always do, I'm not listening to myself, and I always, as I always say, this could sound terrible. I'm gonna listen to myself. So, um, it sounds fine. I just need to play it in tune, all that fun stuff. But for me, it's actually making sure I have give, give direction, have a place to go. So I do that. And then, don't get too loud too soon. So I have some place to go. And I think I can dip lower in dynamic, and I don't think I was doing that enough. Contrast. I still want to. 
I can get that color right to the end of the note. That's what I'm really shooting for. I can't help but breathe, y'all, because it's that, because it's, it's a set of that, because again, it's not a, that's easy, it's more of a, this, this dropping, so this, then this contrast, uh, again, uh, piano, so, back to forte, then piano, it's not right. So you get the picture. I think I'll get something that, that works. All right, let's make some recordings. Hey everybody, thanks so much for watching. And if you liked what you saw and like what you heard, I mean, Mendelssohn, he's a good composer, then hit that subscribe button. And while you're there, you can hit the alert button so you're notified every single time I come out with a new video. I've got new projects coming out. I'm Joseph Conyers. You can find me on TikTok. You can find me on Instagram. Uh, and of course, you can find me right here on the tube. Uh, so everyone have a great day and I'll see you next time.